<clears throat> hey everybody, good evening. It's Marty Walzer, otherwise known as Raging Al Bear on social media. And tonight I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the social contract and problem players and what to do about that situation. Um, it's been a while since I did a video. I was hoping to do a few more over the course of the summer, but you know, life interferes. Kids, family vacations, you know how it is. Well, maybe you don't. <laughs> you may not have kids. You may not have family vacations. I don't know. Uh, but enough about me. Um, so this is the next episode in my GM 101 series. And what to do about problem players and how, that, uh, how the social contract applies in this situation. So... Um, the social contract is actually a an idea that's been around in tabletop gaming for a while, but a lot of people may not have actually heard of it. They, it you may be living by this thing that you don't even know exists. And uh, it's a pretty simple concept. Um, it really boils down to... <sighs> Sorry. It really boils down to... We all get together to play D and D or other tabletop RPGs, um, and everybody's there to have fun, roll dice, hang out, whatnot, socialize. So, don't be a jerk. I mean, that's that's the sort of the baseline rule. Don't be a jerk, um, and intentionally harm the fun of other people in the game. So as an example, you know, um, don't attack the other players. Don't cast spells or charm them or do those other things to the other players. Don't steal their stuff. Don't steal from the party. Um, you know, don't play your character in such a way that it hinders the goals. It hinders the rest of the group. Um, because D and D is a team sport, you know we're all sort of pushing to a common goal. Our 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 players, our PCs, may have their own goals and ideals and whatnot, but it's a group effort. And if you are the player that is working against the group consistently, you're not going to be asked back. At some point, the players will get fed up and be like, you know what? We don't want to play this game with you anymore. And the reason I know this is I read a lot of social media where the DMs are saying, hey, I have this player that's doing this. I have this player that's fudging their dice rolls or cheating. Or they read the adventure and they're using all this meta knowledge um, that they shouldn't be, you know, and they're they're harming the mystery and the enjoyment, of the other players, or they're playing this completely antisocial character, um, who is counter to the rest of the group. You know, there's there's the old paladin versus assassin, you know, dynamic that that people always hear about. Oh, I'm I made this guy who's basically kind of evil and. And I have, there's a, another party member that's kind of good. And so I'm going to mess with them, you know. Don't do that, please. So, you know, getting back to the social contract, it's, we only have a limited time to play games. We do it to blow off steam, to relax, to have fun and laugh. The last thing that we want is to have some doofus in the group being a douchebag basically you know ruining the fun for everybody else Be because you know if you're only gaming two or three times a month and that one guy is acting that way at least once a month you know he basically takes down a whole session that's one third of your potential gaming time basically ruined because some guy's being a jackass and i'm sorry i'm being a little bit too the point is, the social contract says, don't be that guy. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of, it's as simple as that. Don't be that guy. Don't make a character that is absolutely not going to 
immediately not get along with somebody else in, in the group, uh, you know, or don't be the guy that attacks the other people. Don't, just don't be that guy or gal. I mean, you know, women could certainly become problem players just as much as the guys do. Um, not my experience so far. It's usually the guys. But <laughs> so let's be fair. There are lots of problem players. Um, got off track. So, you know, let me look at my notes here for a second. Um, you know, don't cheat. Don't read the adventure. Don't try not to use, you know, that meta knowledge that you might have, whether you have it accidentally or on purpose. Um, Don't say it's what my character would do. That is the worst. Whenever somebody trots out that, oh, it's what my character would do, it means that they know they're being antisocial. They know that their behavior is a problem, but they're like using their character as a shield to say, oh, I know I'm being a dick, but hey, it says on my character sheet that I'm chaotic crazy. So therefore, it's okay to play a dick in game pg-13 um no 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 don't do that if you're playing that character make a new character or better yet have him grow <laughs> role play his personal mental growth into a more positive role on the flip side as the dm I always see posts that are like, I have this problem player and they're doing this and it's bothering this other player or they're cheating, they're using this meta knowledge. Blah, blah, blah. How do I punish that player? No, you don't punish that player. What you do is you take time outside of the game to talk to the player. It's as simple as that. Hey, um, Brian, this thing happened in the game last session, and, you know, you kind of pissed a couple people off. What your character did in the game, you know, was making people mad, and I wanted to talk about that. Um, that sort of thing. You know, be, don't be aggressive about it, but be firm to say, there was this behavior. It was a problem, um, and if that is going to continue, it's probably not going to be a good match. You can, you know, change that character's concept if you want to play with the team. But if you're going to try to keep working against the other players and harming their fun, making the game stressful, or you know, whatever making being difficult you're you're not going to be asked back that's that's what it boils down to you don't start out with that you know you don't necessarily say hey get that f out you know talk about the why say you know hey we noticed this behavior can you tell us why why did you attack jim why did you you know whatever do these things um And, you know, most people may even, they may not even realize that their behavior is a problem. They may just think, oh, I'm playing this wacky character and, and that's cool. And, but they, you know, if you point out, you say, hey, the way you're behaving at the table, the way your player is behaving in the game, the way your character is behaving in the game is, is really kind of, you know, making people mad or irritating them or but basically it's harming the fun of the game um so let's talk about what we can do to to prevent that i mean that's what it boils down to you you just got to be straightforward honest firm don't try to put that conflict back in the game by punish punishing their character in game because that never works out and you know if you're passive aggressive in the game to them, 
they're just going to throw that right back at you or the other players, or, you know, it's just going to cause a bigger problem, essentially, and your game will fall apart. So be honest, be firm, just say, look, this isn't going to, this isn't going to work if this behavior continues, or can you at least tell us what is going on? You know? Um, and again, there, there are always caveats. If the players are okay with having an in-game conflict, that is strictly in game and doesn't bleed outside of the game. And they're both like, Hey, let's role play this scene where we get mad at each other. Or the point is, is that if they're both invested in that conflict, the two players, and it's not a distraction to the other, to the rest of the group, like it's not causing other ripple effects that are kind of screwing up the rest of the game, then that's fine. Let them, let them role play and have that, you know, bit of inner personal, character to character relationship. Um, but that's usually, that's like the exception. That's not the rule. Uh, most of the time when these problem player issues come up, it's one person is being jerky and it's really getting on the nerves of somebody else. And along those lines, another bit of advice is as soon as you start to see this social tension developing at the table, don't don't let it go on too long. Um, I mean, you gotta you gotta step in there right away. As the DM, it may not always be fair, but you are essentially the facilitator of not just the game, but of the social interaction that's happening at the table. And I know the DM has a lot of weight on their shoulder already with the planning of the adventures and doing all this NPCs and all this stuff. Yes, you also need to worry about the social interaction that's going on because as soon as you see a negative tension start to develop at the table, figure out what it is, um, and then talk to the players that are involved. Because uh, if you let it ride, you're, you could actually really harm your campaign. And, and a perfect example is this happened to me. Um, I had a new player who would come in, and um, he was really into role-playing in a very particular way. And a couple of my players were, they were the type of, of guys that would banter back and forth with each other. And that was cool because they knew each other well enough or they were comfortable at the table with each other enough that they would banter and poke fun and stuff like that. But when the new guy came in, they started doing that to him. And then it kind of became the two of them bantering and picking at him. So I had a little bit of a bullying situation that was going on. I mean, they weren't being like, nasty and overt they were just doing that like i'm just gonna do little irritating pokey things every session until you know uh, at one point the other player just was like i've had it stop that's enough um and it was my fault for letting it get to that point i because i saw it was kind of developing but i was like oh well they'll they're all adults, they'll kind of, they'll figure it out, you know, they'll work it out. <laughs> no, no. So it just ended up pissing the guy off. He quit the game, which was a shame because he was a good role player and he was he was a nice guy. And I didn't actually even know him that well, but I, I, I thought he was cool and wanted to, to get to know him. And I would have liked to have had him stay in the game, but he got really mad and he quit. And, you know, I lost a good player because of, because of these two jokesters who are just kind of being a little bit too much of an ass, you know, um, at the table. <clears throat> and then they started to do it again to the next player, and I immediately stepped on their necks. I said, you know, it's stop. That's you. Stop, 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 stop. I know you guys like that little witty banter, and between the two of you, that's fine, but you got to stop annoying other people at the table. Um, in that same way, um, and they did to their credit. They they are they are apologetic. Um, so that's my personal anecdote. You, as a DM, you have to watch out for these problem player situations, and then just talk to them. Be you know, don't be passive aggressive about it. Be honest. Be say this is a behavior that I think is harming the game. Um, and I would like you to modify that behavior. 
Um, and if they don't modify the behavior, you know, you give them that little one warning. Maybe you give them two warnings. Maybe you say, okay, hey, this thing happened again or whatever, but talk to them honestly and say, if it happens again, uh, you know, we're going to, I'm just going to have to, you're going to have to sit out this campaign. You know, we, we, maybe we can play board games or do other things, but the, this social dynamic is becoming negative. You know, just don't be mad at him. If he gets defensive, you know, try just to explain your point of view. This is why I think it's harming the game. So, and ask him nicely, hey, you know, please, could you just not do those things? Um, and that's pretty much it, you know? Social contract is don't be jerks to one another. During your session zero, lay out what's sort of appropriate in-game behavior, like is PvP allowed? Or do you have to have express, you know, written permission or whatever, <laughs> not, not written permission, but you know, that any interpersonal conflict that happens between player characters in the game is something that the players discuss out of the game to say, okay, this is the conflict that we're gonna develop or whatever. But they all have to be, all the people involved need to agree that this is just something they're role playing. It's not an out of character personality conflict. Um, you know, and obviously there's exceptions to the r rule. There are games that are specifically like, we're going to shoot each other. Paranoia is a perfect example. The whole point of paranoia is to kill one another and have wacky fun time doing it. And that's fine. That's the premise of the game. But if it's not the premise of the game, yeah, you know, make sure there's clear rules about in-game conflict between players. Um, because that in-game conflict will go out of the game super quick and somebody's going to quit. Maybe everybody's going to quit. Who knows? But you don't want to lose your game to some situation that's very easily avoided. So that's my piece of advice for the day. Um, so I hope uh, I'll get to do another one of these videos soon. And stay tuned. Again, I'm Marty Walzer, the Raging Owl Bear on social media. Have a good day.